Hey guys! So, despite the fact that Australia is far away from us, and we don't know much about it, most people have probably heard at least something about its largest cities, Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. They are united not only by a large number of residents, but also by their proximity to the Pacific Ocean. It may seem that there's almost no life in the center of the continent, due to the desert climate and the challenging living conditions associated with it, but that's not true. In today's video, we will travel to the mysterious and enigmatic city that was once a peaceful corner in the heart of Australia, but has spiraled out of control over time. Welcome to Alice Springs. What's going on in this city? Why is it believed to have gone out of control? What secrets do the depths of the desert hold? Why do people here face unimaginable challenges and dangers every day? You'll find answers to all of these questions right now. So, Alice Springs is a town located in the south of the Northern Territory of Australia. The population of the city is approximately 26,500 people, making it the second largest city in the Northern Territory. The locals call their town simply Alice. The history of this town begins in the mid-19th century. In 1861, Scottish explorer John McDowell Stewart embarked on his journey through Central Australia. He then headed south moving towards the northern part of the continent. Several years later, a reinforced station for the Overland Telegraph Line was built for the southern city of Adelaide to the northern city of Darwin, following Stewart's route. It was here that the first settlement began to form, which was named Alice Springs only in the 20th century. An important point in the city's history was the discovery of alluvial gold in Arltunga, located approximately 100 kilometers to the east. It happened in 1887. Water and supplies were delivered to Alice Springs and Arltunga with the help of the so-called camel trains. Many modern residents of the city are descendants of those camel ears. In 1929, a train line was built here and the town's European population began to grow. However, more significant changes occurred during World War II. Prior to the war, Alice Springs was an isolated settlement of fewer than 500 people. The war transformed the town into a staging base. At one point, there was even talk that it could replace Darwin as the capital of the Northern Territory of Australia. During the Cold War, the U.S.-Australian joint military base Pine Gap was built 18 kilometers from Alice Springs, which was part of the Echelon program and had the highest level of secrecy. It is one of the largest ground satellite communication stations in the world. It houses 33 satellite antennas, 18 of which are covered with distinctive white domes, and a monitoring center that collects information from early warning satellites detecting ballistic missile launches. It isn't surprising that aviation flights over the base are prohibited. Despite its secrecy, its base... Yet despite its secrecy, the base has been featured in pop culture for example, in a Netflix series, and it remains active to this day. The last expansion, and the largest since the Cold War, took place in 2017. The current staff of the base consists of about 800 people from Australia and the United States. The base undoubtedly influenced the city's development as such significant infrastructure received substantial funding. Currently, the town serves as a hub for railway and road connections between the north and south of the continent. It's hard to say that the local climate is ideal for living, just like in other desert regions around the world. The temperature can reach up to 45 degrees Celsius in the summer months, which are December, January, and February. On particularly hot days, the local residents prefer to spend as little time outside as possible, seeking shelter from the heat in shopping malls. The town has a swimming pool, a university, a college, and even an airport. Winter brings some relief, and sometimes the thermometer even shows temperatures below zero. The town is very dry throughout the year. The majority of rainfall occurs in summer, which is when people need to drink a lot of water. It's worth noting that the tap water in Alice Springs is completely safe to drink. In general, if you take a stroll through the central streets of the town, you won't feel anything but delight. It's quiet, with clean streets, well-manicured lawns, and many trees. 
This place doesn't make you feel like you're in the middle of the Australian desert. However, if you venture a little outside the city center, you'll immediately get reminded about where you are. According to the 2021 census, the city is home to approximately 26,000 people. Moreover, every 10th person here is an American, meaning they hold U.S. citizenship. Americans have been living in Alice Springs since the establishment of the 421st Air Force Squadron in 1954, predating the construction of the secret base. There are also several immigrant communities, including Vietnamese, Chinese, Thai, and Indian. It isn't surprising that there are several restaurants serving their traditional dishes in Alice Springs. Approximately 20% of the city's population are indigenous Australians. The largest employer in Alice Springs is the government of the Northern Territory of Australia, which is one of the country's jurisdictions. Alice Springs is the third most populous city in the region and serves an area of 546,000 square kilometers, which is nearly equivalent to the size of France. 8% of the employees are engaged in government administration, slightly less than the school education sector and hospitals. There are also several mining and livestock enterprises. For many years, the main source of revenue for the town's budget was the financial inflow from the Pine Gap military base. Recently, tourism has become a significant contributor to the local economy. It is from here that tours to one of Australia's most famous landmarks, Uluru, are organized. Uluru is located 400 kilometers southwest of Alice Springs. Moreover, the city has numerous museums, casinos, nightclubs, restaurants, and cafes. Various festivals and holidays are held here annually. For outdoor enthusiasts, it is worth exploring the West and East McDonnell Ranges, famous for their gorges and waterholes. There's also swimming, snorkeling, and boating in the Big Hole and Ormiston Lakes. An 85-kilometer drive from Alice Springs will take you to a livestock farm on the Ross River, where you can rent horses or camels and take a trip around the area. You can also wander through the forest or actively participate in farm life. Another option is to visit the ghost town of Arltunga, abandoned during the Gold Rush era. If you have enough time, the King's Canyon is definitely worth a visit. It is located 320 kilometers from Alice Springs and is one of Australia's most breathtaking places. In addition to a trip to the sacred Uluru, or Ayers Rock as it's also called, there are other entertainment opportunities in the vicinity of Alice Springs. Tourists can visit the Desert Park or the Reptile Center and explore the Botanical Garden and the old telegraph station that gave life to the city. The city itself has several interesting museums worth visiting, such as the Aboriginal Desert Art Gallery, which houses one of the largest collections of indigenous art in Australia, or the Araluan Art Center. Now, at first glance, it may seem like a great place for tourists, but there's also a downside. Alice Springs is currently experiencing challenging times due to poverty of the indigenous population, employment issues, and primarily alcohol, which was restricted for sale to indigenous people until May 2022. As a result, crime rates have soared. Restricting alcohol sales in regions inhabited by indigenous people is a common practice. Due to genetic factors, indigenous people are more susceptible to alcoholism as their bodies don't produce the necessary enzymes to metabolize and neutralize alcohol. Similar problems exist among other indigenous minority groups in the northern and Siberian regions. The authorities of the Northern Territory of Australia might have rushed to lift these restrictions. After the restrictions were lifted in Alice Springs, there was a sharp increase in the number of crimes, including serious offenses such as murders and robberies. The crime rate rose by more than 40% in the second half of 2022. This region was always one of the most crime-ridden in the country, but in 2022, the figures skyrocketed. Most of the crimes were committed by indigenous people and teenagers who formed youth gangs and went on to terrorize the city. It reached the point where city authorities appealed to the federal government to deploy the military to restore peace and order in the city. Even the Prime Minister of Australia came in with a visit. Tour operators are now reluctant to work with Alice Springs. And visitors are strongly advised to not go outside after dark. 
Eventually, the local authorities started combating the high crime rate by reintroducing strict alcohol trade restrictions and increasing the number of police officers. After these measures were implemented, the situation improved slightly, but the residents of the city believe that additional measures are needed. Despite the current difficulties, not all hope is lost for Alice Springs. It still has the potential to further develop as a tourist center due to its surrounding natural beauty and unique location in the heart of the continent. Access to the city is still possible by plane or train from Adelaide to Darwin. Therefore, if the authorities listen to the majority of the locals and start addressing crime, not only by restricting alcohol sales, but also by creating conditions for improving the living standards and education of the indigenous population, Alice Springs will have a real chance to become a prosperous city in all respects, attracting guests from all over the world. At least, it has everything it needs to do that. Well, that's all for today, friends. Give the video a thumbs up if you learned something new. Let me know if you'd travel here and, and visit in the comments. And we'll see you next time.